And this, ladies and gentlemen, is Good Morning Royal Ascot. And joining myself, David Jennings, to preview all the action on the second day of Royal Ascot is Racing Post number one tipster, Graham Rodway. I was told to say that, by the way. <laughs> uh, Kay Tracy and Ali Vance. Welcome to the show, everybody. How are we feeling? Yeah, very, very, very excited to be here, Dave. Um, what we, we're in day two, aren't we? See, I get we, lost sometimes in these big meetings. Wednesday, Graham. Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday, yeah. because I'm always working two days in advance, you see. I'm always doing, like, if it's Tuesday, I'm doing previews for Thursday. So we're only on Wednesday, aren't we? we day we, two. I can confirm we are definitely on Wednesday, <laughs> okay, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. And we're previewing the action today, not Fridays today. Okay. So, okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, good stuff. Uh, Kate, how are you? Great to have you here. Good, yeah. All good the way from you. Cheltenham. All the way, I know. And I was asked it yesterday, so I've done the backwards and the forwardsing, and then back to cover it from home today. So, yeah, it's a lot of travelling about, but the voice is holding on from one day anyway. Mm. You're on for us. A you're on with us a couple of days this week. Just the one. Just as today. As far as I'm aware, I don't want to do a G <laughs> well, now and lose track of my days. Let's just see how you get on today, okay? Let's <laughs> we'll just see. see. You might be asked back, okay? <laughs> oh, he's hoping. <laughs> Ali, I know you're in Royal Ascot today. Um, I'm at Ascot today, and you are stuck with with me all week. I'm afraid, DJ. But I'm delighted to be upgraded today. I've made it onto the Chesterfield. Yeah, you looked very uncomfortable in the chair yesterday, so we said we'd give you a nice, yeah, comfy I'm, chair I'm to pretty, sit on. Yeah, delighted about that. Now it's all about finders keepers today here on Good Morning Royal Ascot and Paddy Power. Those generous souls are giving away €100,000 again, or pounds. Yeah, 100000 quid up for grabs yet again. There is no catch apart from the fact that you I have to thought you were going to say there's no cash. There's no, <laughs> okay, there's a lot of cash. That defeats the purpose no of the show, Ali. Um, that you have to check your account. So it's going to be five grand for 20 people this morning in two lots of 10. All you have to do is check your account, and if you find five grand in there, you have to withdraw it to keep it. So we will start our first 10 names then, our first 10... 5k drop right now so you've got 15 minutes to open up your paddy power account if there's 5k in there withdraw it and it is yours if you don't you lose it i'm afraid after 15 minutes and do stay tuned because we will be giving away the locations very very soon and then we'll have the names so if you have a paddy power account please log on because you might win a rake of cash let's have a quick chat about yesterday it was one of them days where there was some terrific performance. Obviously, yesterday on the show, the big talking point and a heated debate was about River Tiber and Asadna. It didn't quite develop into the clock watchers v eye watchers match that we thought it might, runners. No, but it's always nice when the eye watchers win, isn't is it? Is it? The clock watchers are wrong, isn't it? Really? Well, I, I think so, don't you? Well, oh, and don't get me wrong, I'm a clock watcher myself and use speed figures a lot. But, I, see, maybe my speed figure's wrong, but I had River Tiber higher than the, than the Sedna, but all the people who did it properly had a Sedna higher. But, you know, sometimes you're right when you're wrong, aren't you? Mm, absolutely. And fair play to Simon Rowlands. They kissed and made up on Twitter, Johnny and <laughs> Simon Rowlands. I think they're actually going I, for dinner tonight. I heard about this, but I, I haven't seen it. But, yeah, was there a little bit of a... Bit of a just a bit, yeah. Just, just a little bit, yeah, yeah. But anyway, River Tiber, terrific winner of the Coventry. Do you think he is the real deal, River Tiber? I uh, don't know. It, a lot of these um, Valley Doyle horses, I think they're, they're kind of almost clones of each other. They all look the same, don't they? Like River Tiber looks a bit like Paddington. I'm sure he'll go on and win loads of Group 1s. Is he an absolute champion? Is he a Frank or...? No, he's not, is he? Okay, fair enough. Well, you think he is? No, no, I don't. I don't think well, anything is Frankel. Then, almost uh, you thought he was Frankel. No, I don't think he's Frankel. No, I definitely, I definitely don't think he's well, Frankel. What do you think he is? I think he's a very good horse. I probably think he's the most likely winner next year's two thousand guineas. Would I back him at six to one with Paddy Power? No, but I think he's a very good juvenile, and I thought he really dug deep. It wasn't a great time though. No, very diplomatically put there. Yeah, yeah, I'd be a good politician. Uh, Kate, what was your highlight of day one? Oh, from a punting perspective, uh, Charon finishing third was probably as good as it actually got for me. <laughs> it was a really, yeah, not great um, for the pocket yesterday. But uh, yeah, that was that was the thing that made sure that I came home at least on the up anyway. But the highlight yesterday was, I mean, my favourite thing is to go on the Tuesday, go to the pre paddock, see the horses beforehand. I said River Tiber is the exact clone of Paddington. It was unbelievable. But yeah, the, that's always my highlight to go there, to see the Australians, the American horses in the pre parade ring beforehand is just to see the size differences between them is something that I just love. Absolutely. Ali, um, it was one of those days where Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore, especially Ryan Moore, took over and Vaughan in the finale was, was breathtaking, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Especially when turning for home, he wasn't looking... But no. he was being niggled along a bit and then he just took off. So good day for Ryan Moore. 
Um, great day for Aidan O'Brien, his horses, his team, obviously here in fantastic uh, form. Um, I really liked Triple Time in the first. I thought Neil Callan rode a brilliant race. He was absolutely been towed for the first half. Um, and to have that amount of energy left, I thought he's, yeah, seriously classed Triple Time. So, and great to see Neil Callan, who's done brilliantly around the world, back here and winning a Group 1. And a shout out to our very own Robbie Wilders, who tipped Triple Time. Yes, he did, in Monday's supplement in the race and post. A Rachel colleague Post's of yours. Yeah, Racing Post number two tips though. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I made it to the front page either. <laughs> no, well, no. Look at these two on the front yeah. page, not you and so, Robbie. Rodders is a bit put out because on the front of the Racing Post there is Tom Siegel and uh, there is Paul Keeley. But there wasn't really room just there for Graham Rodway, I don't think, was there? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. How can you have tipping aristocracy what? on the front page of the Racing Post and not have me on it, DJ? I, I don't know. I no, really I don't. don't. Know either. Yeah. That's the biggest quandary of the day, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, absolutely. I'm sure everyone's scratching their head at home. <laughs> now, of course, on the show, as you know, we're going to preview all the action on day two of Royal Ascot, but we've got a new segment coming up later in the show, which you would have seen yesterday, where Johnny Deneen took on Paul Keeley and beat him in the race. And today, Kate Tracy has taken on our very own racing's number one tipster. Mr. Graham Rodway. So stay tuned for that in the race. But before then, we're going to kick off our preview. And as ever, we're going to start off with the first race on the card. It is the Queen Mary. And what a race we have in store here. This is going to be fast. It's going to be furious. And currently, Beautiful Diamond is your 130 favourite. Relief Rally, 4 to 1, as big as 14 to 1 two days ago. Now into 4 to 1. Holy God, that is some gamble. Midnight Affair is 8 to 1. It's 17 to 2 out of the stars. Got to Love a Grey, of course you do, is 9 to 1. Crimson Advocate is 11 to 1. Betty's Bay is 12 to 1. And Juniper Berries, who I think has got a squeak as well, is 12 to 1. So you've built yourself up now, Graham. Your Racings and Racing Post number one tipster. Give us the winner of the Queen Mary. Yeah, well, usually I've got like a real wild one for you, haven't I, in the first? But I don't here. I think the further win. I think Beautiful Diamond will win. She's quite a lot shorter than I thought she would be, but she looked really good when she won at Nottingham first time out. Went through that race beautifully, travelled well, put the race to bed, went, I think, three, three and a quarter, something like that. She went and won by. There was a good gap between the second and third. I like it when there's a good time, talking about clock watchers, and there's good gaps between them. So it suggests that, you know, they've run a good time. And the reason they've run a good time is because they finished a long way beyond a good horse. And I think that's what happened with, with Beautiful Diamond. And of course, um, Carl Burke, he's like the um, the new Aidan O'Brien in the juvenile division, isn't he, is he not? Yeah, he's got some terrific juveniles. Yeah, he's got some yeah. fantastic juveniles. He won the uh, this race last year, didn't he? He was dramatised. And he won the um, Chesham last year, first time out. Debutant, Holloway boy. So he's obviously got elite status as his main one this mm. year. But uh, I think... Uh, Beautiful. beautiful diamond, yeah. I think, but got to love a grey could run well. So mm. that's his other one. Mm. Okay, so um, two Carl Burke. Two uh, Carl, yeah. Maybe you could uh, you could do the the, the forecast. Carl Burke's uh, one two. There you go. It's all about Carl Burke for Graham Rodway in the Queen Mary. Ali Vance, you have got We've some got, locations for us. Yeah, people have got just under nine minutes to check their Paddy Power account to see if they've got 5k in there. If you're in Hull, Dublin, Londonderry, Bristol, Athlone, Warrington, Donegal Town, Sheffield. Ballina Slow or Dublin, then check your account. If you've got 5k in there, you've got to withdraw it to keep it within the next eight and a half minutes. They go eight minutes to take that money out of your account. If you're in any one of those 10 locations, take it out. Rob Paddy, take your money. Kay Tracy, you want to rob Paddy as well. What's going to win the Queen Mary? Really do. But I agree with you, Rob, totally here, where I'm with the favourite. So I've got an unoriginal start to the day. But yeah, she has to be the play for me as well. Carl Bucks, it could just hardly have wished for a better start with his two year olds this season to follow on from those impressive successes last season as well. And she was so good on that day EB start where her quick action, I would say, does suit a quicker surface. So I would like to see the track dry up that bit more so today. But we know that Ascot just eats rain anyway. And for her to be a daughter of Twilight Sun, you just don't see Twilight Sun's winning first time up. And for her to go and do that, yes, she's got that speedy pedigree. Her dam was a lethal force. And so she was entitled to do that. She came from the breeze ups anyway. But I mean, she cost a pretty penny. I think she was originally sold for 30,000 guineas. That obviously rose to 360,000 pounds then following the breeze up. So obviously she was showing enough anyway. Hopefully the quicker ground here for her. And on her pedigree, there should really be more to offer with the more experience that she gains. Okay, interesting. Beautiful Diamond. A lot of love for Beautiful Diamond here on Good Morning Royal Ascot. I'm a big relief rally fan here. Big 14 to 1 a couple of days ago. I know that's no good to you now. 
But Relief Rally won it, won at Salisbury last time, beat Juniper Berries. I thought she was seriously impressive, Relief Rally. And first time I'd even at Windsor, I loved what she did from the furlong pole to the line. I think that race at Salisbury could be the key race here, because I think Juniper Berries is going to run a big race as well. So Relief Rally and Juniper Berries, I think both of them are going to finish in the frame. Ali, what do you like in the Queen Mary? Well, I'm with these guys and I'm in team Carl Burke, but I'm going for the other one. Gotta love a grey, comes here unbeaten. It's got some listed form as well in the bag as well. Um, one of her Nottingham debut. So got to love a great, a better price really. And right on cue, we've got some names for those locations. There we are. So Stuart, Deirdre, Lucy, Amy, Christian, Daniel, Gary, Kaylee, Neem and Derek. If you are watching, check your Paddy Power account. If anyone knows these people in these towns, ring them, call them, tell them to check their Paddy Power account because 5K could be in there. You've got to withdraw it to keep it. And we've got a good geographical spread there over both countries. Yeah, we're going from right from the top to right to the bottom of both countries. So there you go. If you're in any of those locations and that is one of, of your names, log into your Paddy Power account and take the money out. So you'll see our selections for the Queen Mary, the opener on day two of Royal Ascot. It's Relief Rally for me. It's Beautiful Diamond for Graham Rodway and Kay Tracy. And got to love a grey, Ali Vance. She's loving her greys. That is the selections for the Queen Mary. So moving on to the second race on the card, it is the Kensington Palace Philly Stakes. And we've got your one there. Great name. People actually ask me, what, what is this name? Your one there. But it's like, you know, look at your one there. Isn't it your one, your one there is gorgeous. Do you know? Isn't it your, your one? I was pointing at both of you. Isn't it your one there? It's your one there. You no. one there? You won there? Yeah. You won there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of an Irish slang kind oh. of thing. You're one there. You won what? You're one there, might like a thing. <laughs> I think your, your oh, Irish right. slang okay, isn't right. quite resonating Translating with that. <laughs> no, no, it's a bit of a niche kind of language, isn't mm. it? But your one there is four to one favourite at the moment. Joseph O'Brien holds the key here because he's got Adelaide as well at eleven to two, and Tarab is next in the market at six to one. Taramara is seven to one. It is eight to one. Lady Eros and eleven to one. Crystal Caprice now. Now Graham Rodway, you're on the show. This is your only day here this week. Am I right? No, you're wrong. I'm wrong. Well, yeah. You're back with us? I'm back on Saturday. Back on Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so you've got uh, two days with us. You've got a bit of a break in the middle. This is your moment to shine because I know from speaking to you over the last couple of days, this is one of your strongest fancies of the entire week. Yeah, Adelaide. Um, ran in a race at the Curra last time. You might have been there, DJ. You're often at the Curra, aren't you? I was Very, there. very strong. Uh, I think it was a mile, was it? Or it might have been seven. One of those big handicaps. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Oh. Always went off a million miles in front. First three, like I said, good time figure. First three were clear. Um, Adelaide's caught him behind and absolutely nowhere to go. He had to sort of come right around the outside of the field. Absolutely flew home. Would have won with a clear run. Um, got a huge chance, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Was, was it Rami, the horse that beat him? Y it was. Yes, I think so, yeah. yeah. There, there's a bit of intertwining form because when we come on later, there's a horse that ran, also ran in that race that finished second that's running the Hunt Cup. Okay, okay. Never, the, the race of number two tips are very wild. It's, that's his theory. So, so Tom or Paul aren't making it even to the top two? Who's Tom and Paul? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think that um, there's a th he has this theory called a related double, which is a very, very good theory, right? If you've got a piece of form where you've got two horses who both ran in the same race, like that one, you think it's a strong piece of form. Yeah. It's a related double, right? Because you've got Adelaide running in this race yeah. and you've got... Dunham, I get it. Running in the in the Royal Hunt Cup. The yeah. idea being that if Adelaide wins this race, it's a form boost for Dunham, who beat him last time. The price will shorten on Dunham. You've got the related double. I get it. I get no, it. I think it? most people watching the show gets it. You're not solving a the theorem here. Yeah. <laughs> Did, did, did yeah. It makes sense. Uh, yes, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, I've got it. Have you ever done one? Yeah, absolutely. There's, like, one, there's one to do today. Dunham and, did I mention that? <laughs> Dunham and Adelaide in this. Dunham and Adelaide. Yeah. Okay, fair related enough. Related double. Related double, yeah. I'm sure plenty of Good Morning Royal Ascot viewers have done related doubles. They're not specifically to you, Graham. No, no, Robbie Wilders is a man who invented oh, it. Oh, he invented it, it yeah. yeah. In about 1700, I'd say, yeah. he invented it, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, that is Graham's related double. It is Dunham and Adelaide. So this is one of these mad things that's going to come up for you. I just know it. Kate, what wins? I'm just pleased I learned something new today. Thank you, Gerard. <laughs> Thank you, see. 
<laughs> yeah, she's been sarcastic. He's a revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got intertwining form lines, but they're all in the same race, unfortunately. So I'm, I, unless you can't I'm do the sort of, double there. Yeah, no. I can't really do my double there. I might do the forecast then between far too shy and Bell Haven. Therefore, far too shy. I did not expect her to be twenty-two well, to one. You're as I'm going big here, Kate. Yeah. Well, I was on original in the first race, so I've got to kind of make up the okay. deficit somewhere. Yeah. Far too shy here. Winner last time out. That came at this track. Admittedly, on the straight course. She's on the round course now, but she ran in this race last year. That was off of a mark of 95, so she's seven pound lower this time around. She ran well in the race last year as well. And for all that, she just sort of lost her way somewhat, getting back to winning ways, a rediscovery of her form. She was the last one off of the bridle as well. And she was right on the outside of the wing there, and you thought it's just gonna be a matter of how far she's gonna win by. She probably did need the line late on, so that's gonna be the biggest concern about the more stamina sapping round course for her here. But I still think there's plenty of mileage in this mark for her. So yeah, she is the one for me who is way overpriced at 22 to one. That is your, give us the name of your fancy again. Far too shy. Far too shy and Bellhaven mm. you think it'll run well as well at 20 to one. Well, she beat Bellhaven last time out of it. Bellhaven, I actually don't know what, uh, 20, 20 to one. Bellhaven, to one. Yeah. So yeah, may as well do. Pay okay. for a week if that came off. Excellent. Tell us about this related double again. <laughs> nope. Joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. We know what a related double is. Ali Vance, what do you like in this? We have a winner though. Whoa! Before that, Stuart from Hull uh, taking home 5k. Uh, we've got 50 seconds. Anyone else there? You've got to check your Paddy Power account. If you've got 5k in there, withdraw it. Loads of cash being given out. We've got a winner. We've matched yesterday. We only had one winner yesterday. We've got another 10 names to drop soon. So well done to Stuart in Hull. 5k richer. It's a sign of the show's surging popularity since you come on, G Rod. We're already level with yesterday. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. do you, do you uh, like yes, Lady Eros for me. Um, I t it's such a hard race, and I do really like your one. Uh, you're, 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 you're one there. I you're the one there. You're one, you're, you're, one, you're one there, Case. You're one there. But Lady Eros, um, I like the. Um, I think she was progressive last year. She's from Powerful Yard. Sheen Murphy's been booked, um, and she impressed last time. Um, last time out at Yarmouth, beating a, a subsequent winner. So at a reasonably decent price, what is she, nine to one? I like her. And uh, racing post readers will find out this morning. I'll try not to give too much away, but Paul Keely, who sat in this sofa yesterday, he is all over your one there. Your one there, primed to go close after our eye-catching show. Two points each way on your one there from Keels. So there you go. I like Crystal Caprice here. I think Crystal Caprice at into 10s now, was 11s. I think she's a big price. Don't think she stayed a mile two the last twice. I think a mile, a strongly run mile, is exactly what Crystal Caprice wants in this. Ryan Moore, he's all right, isn't he, Ryan? He's not too bad, yeah. Usually, usually really starts this meeting slowly. Usually, uh, he averages, I think, 0.8 winners on the first day and just gets better and better as he goes on. He's had, what, three winners on the first day? He's had three winners, yeah. If that continues in trend, he could have them all on Saturday. He could he have seven. <laughs> 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 he was 11 to 10 to be leading rider on Friday with Paddy Power. 11 to 10. Mm, that was some price. Now, no, he's 1 to 6. Mm. 1 to 6. So there you go. Those are our selections for the Kensington Palace Stakes. I am with Crystal Caprice. Rodders is with Adelaide's. Kay Tracy is... My eyesight is bad. What's it called, Kate? Too shy? Far too shy. Far with too shy. Oh, I see what they did there. And Lady Eros there for Ali Vance in the Kensington Palace Stakes. So that is two races covered at Royal Ascot. We all know what these guys think about Royal Ascot. But let's find out what the people of New York think about Royal Ascot. Because Mark Walsh was on a trip over there recently. Royal Ascot is just around the corner. So here we are in New York to see just how much the Americans know about horse racing. Okay, Spider-Man, do you prefer Royal Ascot or the Breeders' Cup? Uh, the Breeders' Cup? The Breeders' Cup. The Breeders' Cup. Royal what? A cup. Royal Ascot sounds fancy. Can you tell me how many furlongs are in a mile? Ah, 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 ah. How many furlongs are in a mile? Uh, 12. Ooh, 12. I would say like four or five. I would say since it's called furlongs and not fur shorts, I would say short number like five. Do you know what Swinley Bottom is? I have no idea what's on the bottom of this. Me neither. Frankel or Frankel. See the Stars? Season, season Star? Frankel or See the Stars? I mean, See the Stars sounds better. See the Stars. Because of his three-year-old campaign? Of course. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's so ambitious, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. I mean, I was, it was innovative, really, is what it really, was. Well, it really was, it really was. And you know, kudos to John Ox for that. I'm going to ask some names. You tell me if you know these people. Do you know Frankie DeTori? No. Do you know uh, Ruby Walsh? Yeah, Joe Walsh's brother. Ruby Walsh? No. 
Fran Berry. That sounds more familiar. He'll be very happy to hear that. Fran Berry. Uh, wait, that sounds familiar. Fran Berry? Not right now, thank God. You know who Ruby Walsh is? Maybe. Okay. What about Fran Berry? Um, basketball. Basketball, correct. Have you ever heard of Frankie Dettori? No. Have you ever heard of Ruby Walsh? I like somebody that makes some juice. I was going to say jelly. Ruby Walsh. Yeah, juice and jelly. Ruby Walsh, pineapple and orange. Yeah! Ah, oh, oh, Ruby Wells! Ruby Wells! Ruby, you made that drink, I'll let you ball. Patty Power. Katy Perry? Patty Power. Heidi Power? Patty Power. Nah, man. Uh, do you prefer the Ascot Gold Cup or the Cheltenham Gold Cup? Ascot Gold Cup. Cheltenham. Oh, jumps and, jumps and flat fans. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the beauty of racing. It's the beauty of racing. Do you know, why do they ring a bell when they turn for home at Royal Ascot? Yeah, I gotta let you know. It's the final, it's the last round, so it's exciting. You're, ding, ding, and yeah. the people know, and then, you know. You're right. Ted Lasso or Ted Walsh? Uh, as a cowboy, I like a lasso. Do you prefer uh, Ted Walsh or Ted Lasso? Uh, Ted Walsh. Ted Walsh is just retired. Do you not miss him? No, I mean, I miss him a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? I, he, he go ahead and do what he got to do. Right. He got the money. <laughs> he yeah, got the out. money. But I go with Ted Walsh. He sounds more Ted solid. Walsh, yeah. Yeah. He's, just, he's got great views on racing, hasn't he? I mean, just on account of knowing Ted Lasso and not knowing Ted Walsh, I'm just going to go with Ted Lasso. <laughs> Ted Walsh is just retired. You've got some cheek. You've got some cheek. <laughs> Say that again. Happy retirement, Ted. There you go, Ted Walsh. <laughs>you want 200 quid worth of free bets who wouldn't want 200 quid worth of free bets go on to racingpost.com forward slash free bets and you will potentially get not potentially you will get free bets on the racing post website so if they do have a free bet maybe they could have it on something in the duke of cambridge stakes because this is for many people one of the bankers of the week it is again from the joseph o'brien stable joseph o'brien today has five more runners than his father isn't that hard to believe Joseph O'Brien, I should have kept that question for the quiz. Yeah. Joseph yeah. O'Brien has nine runners. Aidan O'Brien has four runners today, which is hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. So Joseph is going with the scatter gun today. And he's got Jumbly here, the nine to four favourite. Prosperous Voyage is three to one. Grand Dam is six to one. It is 15 to two, Queen Amaratu. And it is 11 to one bar, which includes Rogue Millennium. Jumbly, We'll come to you here first, Kate. Jumbly, for many people in the lead up to this meeting, after that eye catching run at the Curra, was banker material, not just for today, mm. but for Royal Ascot. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, Ke Connections will be hoping that she'll start to make some inroads into that one and a quarter million guineas price mm. tag pretty soon, anyway. I mean, she was a good horse with the Charltons previously, and she signed off for them with a win in the Group 3 Valiant Stakes on the round course. The straight track here. The biggest concern I guess you'd have with her is her ability to settle. She has got those keen going tendencies and she showed that last time out, but you can forgive it because evidently it was on the back of a 10 month absence. So she just looked fresh, but she still ran a really solid race. So coming here with that ability as well, 24 day turner has to take the edge off, avoid the bounce factor as well. Hopefully she'll get settled. And yeah, at this stage, I think that she is easily the one to be. I know obviously Aiden is the king and no, none of us can doubt that Aiden is he is the king right but Joseph as a target trainer as a proper target trainer so Jumbly arrived in a stable one and a quarter million Royal Ascot written all over her he would have targeted this race from the moment she arrived in the stable and I look at Galway plates I look at Melbourne cups he is the ultimate target trainer and combine her form with her run in the Curra, with the fact that this would have been our ultimate aim, I think makes Jumbly the bet here, J-Rod. So if he's the king, then Joseph's the prince, isn't he? The prince, Prince O'Brien. <laughs> king O'Brien and Prince O'Brien. Prince O'Brien's got more runners than King's Day. Um, <laughs> what? Go on. What wins anyway, this? Anyway, um, I don't fancy it, Jumbly. Um, I'm with... Uh, you don't fancy the prince? No, I don't <laughs> fancy the prince. No. The artist formerly known oh, as you know Joseph. That. The Prince. <laughs> <laughs> I fancy Prosperous Voyage, okay. yeah, who, uh, who was one grade ones, obviously won the Falmouth last year. 
<laughs> beaten in spiral, um, who was obviously well, well below form that day. She, but was, she was like one to, one to seven. Yeah, there yeah she was yeah. very disappointing. But um, nevertheless, she's got loads of good form. Obviously finished second, I think, to Inspiral again in the Phillies Mile, won those races. They have so many two-year-old races at the end of the year, don't they? Um, she was second in the Guineas. Um, and then, yeah, I thought she did really well to win it. Epsom so did I. Everything went wrong and oh, she still won, yeah. She was slow at away. She was miles behind. Slowly run race, no pace. She had to come from last to first, really showed a good turn of foot. I think this race was set up better for her. She's well suited by a galloping track like Ascot. Okay, Prosperous so you're Voyage. Prosperous Voyage. To beat the Prince. Very well supported Prosperous Voyage, three to one to beat Prince Joseph. For G-Rod Ali, which side are you on? Are you a Jumbly fan or Prosperous Voyage I'm fan? I'm a big Prince fan. Yes. Okay. If Joseph's Prince, what does that make Donica? Oh. Spare. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd, he'd be like, well, he'd be like Harry and William. Like. Yeah. 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 Another prince. Another prince. Just, yeah, a different prince. Um, I really like Jumbly for all the obvious reasons. But what do you think of Rogue Millennium, Mane- Millennium at a massive price? Yeah, definitely has a chance. It would, it's not a massive price. only 11 to 1. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's been well backed. Oh, well, right. It was well backed. Um, for Tom Clover, group listed winner last year, second in the group two latest, dropping back in trip. I just think of... Um, maybe no disrespect to Tom Clover, but he would perhaps be shorter if he was trained by someone else. I don't know, just a mm. bit of a one under the, under the, um, not so obvious, but I do think Jumbly um, is, is, yeah, one of the best bets of the day. Yeah, I agree. I think Jumbly is the one here. It just looks like your, your perfect plot here with Jumbly. And as you can see, we've got three votes for Jumbly and Graham Rodway, not for the first time in your lifetime. You are out on your own, G-Rod, <laughs> with Prosperous Voyage. Just because you're standing on your own don't mean you're standing in the wrong place, DJ. Exactly, G-Rod. It's I think Kevin this is going to be your said. day. The legend that is Kevin Pauline. Ali, we have another giveaway. Yeah, another 10 names then, another 10 people up for 5K in their Paddy Power account. All you've got to do is withdraw the money within the next 15 minutes. It's going to start now. The clock is going, then the clock is running. Check your Paddy Power account. If you've got 5K in there, an extra 5K, withdraw that money to keep it. If you don't withdraw it, you won't be keeping it. So we'll be revealing some names and some cities in a bit, but you've only got 15 minutes to check your Paddy Power account. So this is Finders Keepers. It does what it says on the tin. You find it, you keep it. So log in to your Paddy Power account and you might win a right few quid. So it's time for the big one on Wednesday. It is the Prince of Wales Estates and what a corker we have in store here. Luxembourg for that man, Aidan O'Brien, is currently your seven to four favorite now, Luxembourg. Adiar is 11 to four. Baybridge is 130. My Prospero is seven to two. And it is 20 to 1 bar. And I'm just delighted I pronounced my Prospero right saying. because Lydia Hislop, if she saw me <laughs> pronouncing it, my Prospero, which I have done on umpteen occasions, I wouldn't be here tomorrow. So, you know Lydia, if you're watching, I know you're an avid watcher of the show, Lydia. It's my Prospero. I know it is. So, Prince of Wales' stakes, uh, G Rod, this is, this, is, this is a glorious race. I know we don't have Desert Crown, but we have got the best of the rest, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a great race, isn't it? We've got some. Um Three, three, three proper Group 1 horses. We've got Luxembourg, Adiar, obviously a derby winner, and Baybridge. And we've got My Prospero who's yet to make the step up to Group 1. And he could improve for a step up in trip. I thought the line of form to be with might be Luxembourg and Baybridge last time out in the yes. Irish... Uh, t- I keep calling it the Irish Gold Cup. I don't know why, but it's not called the Well, Irish it is Gold in Cup. Ireland and it's a Gold Cup. It's just a Tattersalls Gold Cup. Oh, the Tattersalls Gold, Gold Cup. Cup, right, yeah. And it's Tattersalls. Tattersalls, yeah. So really I used to always think it was Tattersalls. It's yeah, it's Tattersalls. Tattersalls used to be like the grandstand enclosure in England, didn't mm. it? Anyway, mm. they came well clear the first two. Uh, if Baybridge wasn't in the race, or if Luxembourg wasn't in, I'd be really confident on one or the other. But I just, I'm worried that I'm going to back Luxembourg and then Baybridge is going to improve past him at this track. But Baybridge is double the price, Giro. Yeah, I think Luxembourg will win. I'm with Luxembourg because I thought that Baybridge had the chance to come and get him at the current, and he, and he. He had his chance, he couldn't get there, could he? And then I thought towards the end, Luxembourg was going away from him Mm. again at the line. And I I really do think that's the piece of form uh, to to stick with. I'll back Luxembourg, but I will save on Baybridge, just in case the switch to Ascot, of course, where last year he produced his best performance, you know, it's possible that might help him, mightn't it? Um, Last year was beaten in this race, wasn't he, Baybridge? Short price favourite, so I stay at rest. Very good. A question on yesterday's show in the race. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, good to see you watched it. Yeah. 
No, uh, he's, he's got a good record at Ascot, hasn't he, Baybridge? So I could see him running really well and pushing Luxembourg close. I think Luxembourg uh, will have too much for him. Adi, I don't, don't, don't fancy Adi R. Um, and I think if there's going to be one of the others comes out, it'll be Maya Prospero, who obviously could improve significantly for a step back up in trip. He was third behind Baybridge last year at the track. Mm, interesting. So that is Girard's thoughts of the race. But one man you've got to hear about on this race is Paddy Power's very own Mr. Rupert Walsh. When he won the Tattersall's Gold Cup and he was unrecognisable from the horse I had seen the month previously. Uh, even the demeanour, in the pre- even his demeanour in the parade ring, he looked a completely different race horse. I thought he got a really good ride doing the Tattersall's Gold Cup, but I also believe he was the best horse. I think he actually wants a little bit further and I think with the st- stamina of it, a, a day or a assured stamina, this will be a stronger race than the Tattersall's Gold Cup. But I think that will bring the improvement out in Luxembourg. And I think he'll win again. What an offer that is. Win a trip to Santa Anita just by placing a bet on the Racing Post app. Go and do it. You could be off to the Breeders' Cup. So Luxembourg it is for Ruby Walsh. Is it Luxembourg and Graham, sorry, and Graham Rodway? Luxembourg for you, Kate? No, no. He's, he's a horse I've never really warmed to. And he's starting to make me look very, well, not the first horse, to start me make, making me look very foolish. But my Prospero at the prices for me in here, where, yeah, I, I admire the um, pronunciation there. You Thank are, you very much. You have been up all night practicing that for Lydia. Yep. <laughs> Brushing off on the Shakespeare. You'll be speaking in iambic pentameter the next time you host this show. <laughs> um, yeah, him for me. For all that we know plenty about him now, he still remains unexposed as a 10 furlong performer. And he's got all of the size and scope to be making up into being a better four-year-old anyway. And I didn't want to side with him in the lock because I feared the trip. But he just actually shaped so well in that way. He did get outpaced, but he was still up in the teeth of the pace where he didn't really want to be up on the front end in that anyway. So he actually ran a really solid race to finish fourth, all things considered, despite still looking like he wanted to step up in trip. Before we hear the end of that argument, we have some locations. And... This, like, you're going to get very excited here because these are quite open. You've got County Dublin, Ali, and you've got Mead, where I'm from. So, Aoife, if you're watching, we could, <laughs> we could have won 5,000 quid. Have Give us checked, the locations. Have you checked your account? Yeah, these are the locations, then, that the 10 people are in who have got an extra 5K in their account. Dublin, Carluke, Burr. Very good. Whitchurch, Meath, Kildare, Glasgow, County Dublin. Hannam and Priest Hill. Check your accounts and if you've got 5k in there, withdraw it to keep it. And you've got nine minutes left to do that. I thought you might stumble on Burr there, but you didn't. Very oh, thanks, professional. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, well done. I try. Uh, I'm g- good teacher. I rudely interrupted you there, uh, Kate, while you were making your, your excellent case for my Prospero. <laughs> Do Not finish. I, th- I think I was pretty much done. Oh, you were done, were you? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. My, my prosper at the prices. Um, yep, yeah, Steph Finn trip. And as you said, he wasn't too far away in the champion stakes from a day out and Baybridge anyway. One of your stronger fancies of the day? Yes, very much oh, so. Oh, you answered that very emphatically. Kate. It, uh, to caveat that, day two would probably be one of my weaker days. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just go with yes, okay? Yes, yes one of our strongest Strong. fancies of the day. <laughs> Ali, there's been no love whatsoever for Adi R so far. Hasn't even been mentioned. Y- yeah, Baybridge, it, it, uh, either. As Adi R, Baybridge, not going to come from me. It, it, a brilliant race, and I've flitted between so many. Um, and I've landed on Luxembourg for so many reasons that Graham already spoke about, but also the fact that Aidan O'Brien had such a good day yesterday. I just feel like his team are coming here. They they just really, uh, well, you know, obviously all horses perform well. My Prosper, I, 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 lo- I loved him for the lock disappointed me then. I don't think modern games particularly put his form you know, into great, great stead for his run yesterday. Bay Bridge, obviously once it's softer and it's, it's pretty sunny out there, and certainly be drying out by this afternoon. Adi, uh, uh, he's got the great course form, but over 10 furlongs, I think some of the others perhaps are a little bit, got a bit more speed. So Luxembourg for me, um, yep, Aiden's in great form, classy horse. Okay, so I'm very confused now, and you're gonna be very confused because I'm siding with Baybridge. I thought Ryan was masterful at the Curra, and 
I just came out of that race with Baybridge, who had every chance to go by. I wasn't critical of Richard Kingscote at the car at all. I thought if Baybridge was there in time to win the race, if he's good enough. But I just thought Luxembourg got everything his own way there. And I just wonder this time, if he doesn't quite get a freebie out in front, Baybridge, the, the, the sting kind of with the rain yesterday has probably gone out of the ground. It will be slower here than it was at the Curra. Uh, in the t- in the Irish Gold Cup, as you call it, <laughs> also known as the Tattersalls Gold Cup, and I think there's just too much of a difference between Luxembourg and Baybridge in the prices. So I'm with Baybridge. I do think that the that cut's important for for Baybridge. Yeah, mm. it just looks like a little bit of a better horse when when there's a little bit of ease underfoot, and that rain might have helped him. You know, yeah, right? and I think he does progress as the season goes on. So I am with Baybridge. Graham and Ali are with Luxembourg, and it's my Prospero for Kay Tracy. That is a glorious Prince of Wales of Stakes, one of the features of the day. But the highlight of the day, it's the race. Yes, our new quiz show, and it's up next. Here we go, folks. So yesterday, Johnny Deneen showed all his class by beating Paul Keeley. He... You want to see him multiplying numbers? Unbelievable. So after the show, we were so in awe of him. After he, it was like a mul- it was like 17 by 19, and he got it within a split second. So he spent about 10 minutes throwing numbers at him yesterday, and he got them all. So he's just a, a maths whiz. So you have plenty to live up to this today, guys, okay? I three hours sleep. Okay, well, don't be oh getting your God. excuses in already, okay? So, <laughs> Kate Tracy, you have got 60 seconds to answer as many questions oh as you can, God. and then Graham Rodway will be chasing you in the race. Is it nice to have Graham Rodway chasing you? Oh, yes. Okay. I've got what I've wished for for a while. Are you ready? <laughs> no, okay. are you nervous? I didn't even know this was happening, so well, no. <laughs> this is the race, okay? Okay. Okay, here we go. Ali, you're our timekeeper. We've, oh, before we start, before we start, far more importantly, we have got some names for Finders Keepers. We do. Jennifer in Dublin, Scott in Carluke, Shane in Burr, Harrison in Whitchurch, Angela in Meath, <sighs> Mark in Kildare, Luke in Glasgow, Anya in County Dublin, Very good. and Chloe in Hannam, and Linda in Priestel. If they are, if they have your name and you're living in those cities, check your Paddy Power account. 5K could be in there. If you know anyone in these cities, ring them up, tell them to check their Paddy Power So close, it even started with an A. Angela and Mead. It's not Eve and Mead, it's Angela and Mead and Anya in Dublin. Okay, there you go. If that's your name, if that's where you live, log into your Paddy Power account and take the money out. You find it, you keep it. Let's have a winner. Let's go out with a bang. So please log in to your Paddy Power account. So now, Kate Tracy, it's time for <laughs> the race. <laughs> do, do, do. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? No. <laughs> well, we need to start because okay. we've only got a few more minutes. Okay, so Ali, you're on timekeeping. Mm. Your time starts now. In what country is Mayo? Ireland. Yeah, I know. Okay, don't oh, be sorry. slagging the questions. <laughs> okay, they get harder. Uh, River Tiber won the Coventry Stakes yesterday, but who is his sire? Siney. Wrong. Oh, Wooten Bassett. Wooten Bassett. Mm. Vauban won the Copper Horse Handicap yesterday, but what was the winning distance? Ooh, six lengths? Seven and a half lengths. What country won this year's Eurovision Song Contest? Sweden. Very good. Which country is this year's Women's World Cup being held? In which country, should I say? South Africa? Australia Australia. and New Zealand. Uh, Prospero, uh, sorry, Prospero, yeah, I was going to say Prospero. Prospero is a character in which famous Shakespeare performance? The Tempest. Very good. Who did Manchester City beat in last week's Champions League final? Uh, Inter Milan. Excellent. Who won the final race at the 2023 Cheltenham Festival? Uh, which um, the? Oh my God! Time um, is up. Time is up. Oh. You did very well. Gary Arrow sauce, no? In the Martin Park. Aroko. Aroko. Right. Oh, your I time remember unfortunately his name. was up, and we have to be very strict because it's a big prize very at the end strict. of the week. Okay. How did Kate do? Four. I thought you got more than four. I thought I got four. more than four. That's very I'm annoyed hard. about the Australia South Africa thing. We'll have to watch uh, We'll have to watch uh, the show back just to see if you did actually get more than four. But producer Rob here <laughs> says you got four. So Graham, like it's not an unsurmountable task, is it? It might be for me. Okay. We'll see. Okay. So are you ready? Yeah. Now, okay. Here we go. Graham Rodway, can you catch Kate Tracy? I'll try my best. Ali, you're a timekeeper. Your time starts now. 
Who did Aidan O'Brien surpass to become the leading most trainer at Royal Ascot? Yeah, Michael Stewart. Excellent. Who played Bianca Jackson in EastEnders? Oh. <laughs> Are you winding me oh, up? No. Is it uh, Patsy Palmer? Yes! I can't <laughs> believe you got that right. Who won the best picture at the Oscars this year? No idea, passed. <laughs> Everything, everywhere, all at once. Who scored the winner in the FA Cup final? Um, Man City v Man United. Who scored the winner? Uh, I know Gundogan. Was it Gundogan? It was Gundogan. You're in trouble here, Kate. What is the most watched show on Netflix in 2023? Um, it's like you tipping a winner. What, like a film? Um, it's a series. It's a TV show. I can't give, I can't give <laughs> clues. I'm sorry. Um, uh, pass, pass. Stranger Things. Who won the men's singles title at Wimbledon in 2022? Um... Djokovic. Excellent. Who played King, Ch- King Charles or, Prin- or Prince Charles as he was then in the series The Crown? Oh. Time is up. Oh. Rodders, I am very impressed. Thank you. I think, we'll go to the producers now, I think you might have won. Oh, oh you only got four! You only, so we need a tiebreaker, okay? Here we go. We need <laughs> a tiebreaker, okay? Why don't we need a tiebreaker? Uh, who answers the question first, okay? Okay. Okay, who answers the question <laughs> first, okay? pinch him or something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. I have to think of a tiebreaker. I have it. I have to think of one. Yeah, no, I have He's to think. trying to think of one that you're going to You get. have to answer know, the question. Yeah. So whoever answers the question first, okay, you have to say your name. Don't give the answer. Say your name when I ask a question, and then you can answer the question. Okay. Okay. So say your name, okay? Right. Don't say the answer, okay? This is the question to sort out. Who is today's winner of the race? Kay Tracy and Graham Rodway. <laughs> Who won the 2023 Triumph Hurdle at the Chetland Festival? Kate! Uh, lost my Kate Tracy is your winner, ladies and gentlemen. I passed out. I actually almost passed out. I, th- I feel like you weren't even going to try and answer that then, but just to give it to me. Thank you, Jira. I have to say, that was, that was an epic episode of, of the How race. How did you get Patsy? Yeah, Patsy Parmer. You plucked that out of the sky. I very nearly said Patsy Kenzie. I thought I was Oh, yeah. Patsy. Yeah, yeah. But I was just impressed that you got Patsy at all, to be honest with you. So that was the race. Your champion, ladies and gentlemen, it is Kate Tracy, following on from Johnny Deneen yesterday. So our guests are doing better than our full-time staff. There you go. The, it was the mm. rosé from last night, I think, that's helped. Oh, did it, yeah. yeah. Helped you along the way, yeah. Kate. So that was the race. Let's move on to the action on day two of Royal Ascot. And we move on to the Royal Hunt Cup. It doesn't get any easier, folks. And Parato, he's not on the show this morning, but Paul Keeley for the last fortnight has been talking about Parato, who is currently your 7-1 to one favourite. Galley is 15-2. to two. It is Intelligent, who's 8-1. to one. Astro King is 17-2. to two. And Dunham is 9-1, to one, and it's 12-1, to one, Barton. Before we preview the action, Ali, Please, please, please tell me, did we have any winners? No winners. Uh, just one winner today earlier, so no winners of those 10 names, but they will all get 500 quid in their accounts. Okay, what a and nice gift. we did have a winner earlier. Who was it again? Can we remember who won Stuart earlier? Stuart from Hull. Oh, it was Stuart from Hull. Very good, Alan. That was, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. was yeah, worthy of winning the race. Um, <laughs> it was. Yeah, I was going to say from Hull, well done, yes. Yeah, so um, one winner today, but all of the, the 20 names, apart from Stuart, will get 500 quid. And I have to say, you're watching the race all week, and I know you're doing our timekeeping. We are going to let you have a go later no, in the week. No, 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 no. I'm quite happy timekeeping. No, yeah. we're going to let you have a go later no on. No EastEnders week. questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're big fans of EastEnders here on Good Morning Royal Ascot. So, Parato is your 7 to 1 favourite. Your colleague, Paul Keeley, who sat in that very seat yesterday, he is all over this horse. I sat beside him the other day on Monday in the office, and I said, Oh, Keels, you fancy Parato in the Hunt Cup? He said, He's a good thing. Yeah, he said that uh, he said off air the other day. He was, you know, not brave enough to say it on air. I don't think, but he said, if the ground is fast, it will win. It will win. How many runners are in this race? Thirty. Thirty. Yeah, could be on the wrong side. Could win it. Maybe a win it side, and then might, I don't. It's a sort of weird thing that can happen, kind of. Um, one of the highlights of the whole week, isn't it, from a punter's perspective? We love trying to crack these huge field handicaps. Where have you cracked it? Hope so. I've already mentioned the second leg of the related double. Do you need me to explain? <laughs> please, please. <laughs> yeah, for people that was, weren't watching earlier, uh, Graham gave a beautiful explanation of a related double. And the second leg of that related double yeah, runs here, it? and it is... Dunham. Dunham for Natalia Lupini. Yeah, I don't know a lot about her. Come on, DJ, you must know a lot more about Natalia Lupini than I do. Yeah, she's having a terrific season. Doesn't have many runners, but she's got a terrific strike rate. Mm. Really good in these handicaps. And Dunham... Ran up a sequence last year as well. Wayne Lord, and terrific big race rider, rides Alabama later on in the card as well. Um, very, very shrewd operation. And I always think with people in power, 
get good people around you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like Tom Kerr has done with you, Rodgers, in oh, the tipping yeah. department, right? Get good people around you. And Natalia Lupini has got a terrific team. And Dunham, she's an absolute lady. I'd be delighted if Dunham won for her and for you here in the Hunt Cup. Yeah, it would be great if, if the second leg of the related double came up after the first one wins as well. But um, Dunham was second in the race in which we discussed this earlier. Um, I can't even remember the name of the whole. Adelaide, Adelaide was third and Rami won at the Curra. They came clear. The time was good. Uh, it's a big field handicap. The horse has gone up, I think it was rated 50 odd mm. uh, earlier in the season. Now running off 90 odd. Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's, it's a ridiculous amount of improvement the horse has made. Almost like some Mark Prescott's, the way that he's suddenly start. They always start from like a basement at 50 and they end up rated, you know, 100 or 90 or something ridiculous. Similar sort of uh, improvement. And I just thought it travelled like the best horse in that race. Probably, like I said, Adelaide was unlucky not to win it, but travelled really strongly through the race. He'll go through this race just like it. It was just um, done near the line by Rami. It was Rami, wasn't it? And um, I just thought that the time, the way they came clear, looked like a strong race. Stick with that piece of form. Do the related double. OK, the related double. And Dunham is the second leg of that double at 9-1 to one currently with Paddy Power. And I know producer Sam also who I'm sharing a room with this week, has been banging on about Dunham all week. When it was as big as 20s, 16s, 14s, 12s, 10s, and now 9 to 1. Have you backed Dunham yet? I haven't, but he's a lot shorter now, isn't he? Like, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Um, but can we just give producer Sam a shout out for his tip on a triple time that he gave us yesterday? Did he, yeah? Yeah, fantastic. Okay, excellent. Well done, producer Sam. Kate, Royal Hunt Cup. Yeah, uh, easy one, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to see Donham win because Natalia Lupini just needs that like big horse to take it to the next level, doesn't she? After what such a good season this year. Uh, Blue for you though is one for me, David O'Mara for the target trainer for these types of handicaps at Ascot. There's no better man for these types of races. So blue for you for me because I think that the form line to focus in on is the Hamilton handicap at York from last time out that Astro King also ran in, finished just in front yeah, very of my selection. Very, very unlucky, but mm. it kind of feels like the story of Astro King's life, to be honest. Um, I'll still keep him on side with a saver in this all the same, but Blue For You is going to be the one because that was on the back of a 215-day absence, and he was set a really tough task for that. He was drawn wide, out in still 20, he had a wide trip on the way around as well, and admittedly, that is a course and distance he likes, and the risk that you're sort of taking with him is his Ascot runs previously. He's run twice at Ascot. Hasn't been seen to best effect in either of those. But I'm willing to give him another chance third time of asking back at this track. And he ran well last time out, despite so much going wrong for him. Still being given a pound back for that all the same. And as I say, with those intertwining form lines, David O'Mara with the target training he has for these types of races. Blue for you, drawn high, where the pace is. Hopefully that will come off. So it's blue for you. Blue for me, for you, for me. For yeah, blue me. for yeah. you. Blue for you. Uh, Ali, uh, it's always like a tremendously tricky race to try and solve. Do you like these big field handicaps? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to throw a few darts in there. Go Why for it. Why not? I like Gailey. Interesting profile for Sidebin Saror. Mm. Machine Murphy's been booked for him. Um, and I like Chasing Aphrodite for Harry Eustace and Hayley Turner. I think the profile, again, is just interesting. Uh, won a big field handicap at Ascot, so likes the course. Had wind surgery um, over the winter, came back and won that, that handicap. Pretty lightly raced. May sneak in there. I don't know what price he is. Give us the name again. 14 to 1, chasing Aphrodite. Check. Chasing 14 a, a Aphrodite. To one 14 for to Harry one. Eustace and Hayley Turner. But, yeah. Hayley is terrific in these races. She is. She's yeah. good at Ascot. I mean, yeah. well, Royal Ascot is she's good at lots of them, but... Yeah, again, just one that might have slipped in then. OK, I think in races like this, you have to swing for sixes. I think you have to just have a bash, try and find one, and I think I have. A wild one. A wild one, and this is very wild. It's Dawn of Liberation, who is as big as 50 to 1. I think he's 40 to 1 at the moment, OK? He's drawn and stall 1, which could be a catastrophe. For a, We don't know. It could be a catastrophe. It could be glorious. Who knows? 33 to 1 at the moment with... Uh, Paddy Power, it would have to be 33 to 1, wouldn't it? Uh, Dawn of Liberation for me, lost a plot, okay? Was was favour for a listed race on Derby Weekend last, last year at Epsom, okay? I really fancy him, but it was seven at Epsom, too sharp of a test for Dawn of Liberation. It's only ran three times since, and it's gone from a mark of 107 down to 98. It's plummeted down the ratings, despite not running that much. And last time at Chester, ran against Boardman, had a horrible trip out wide, over seven at Chester, again, too sharp. It looked like he was going to fall out the back of the telly. 
and then suddenly, early in the home straight, he decided to actually take off, finish fourth, flew home, strongly run mile is exactly what Dawn of Liberation wants. Now he's a bit quirky, I'd say he's his own idea is a bit the game, but I think a race like this could suit Dawn of Liberation. As I said, the draw could be a nightmare, he's drawn in solid one, but a 33 to 1, I think Dawn of Liberation could potentially win the Hunt Cup for Richard Hannon and Pat Dobbs. And those are your selections, as you can see on your screens there. And of course, Rodders, with his related double, is very keen on Dunham. Moving on to the 5.35, it is the Queen's Vaz. And again, a short price favourite here in the shape of Gregory at 13 to 8. A chess piece is 9 to 2. Peking Opera, very well backed after Aidan O'Brien's good day yesterday, is also 9 to 2. Circle of Fire, 6 to 1. And it is 17 to 2, St. George, 12 to 1, St. Vincent's Garden. Etna Rosso for Joseph O'Brien, who's got a strong hand in this race as well, is 22 to 1. And it is 25 to 1. Bar, Ali, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to start with you here. We're always coming to you last and... This, uh, this time, I'm going to give you the floor. Yeah, look, I think Gregory's obviously the worthy fa favourite. Um, Frankie had a shocker yesterday. So did he? Yeah, did he, he have a shocker? Banned as well, didn't well, he? Well, I know he got banned, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, three seconds. Yeah, uh, I don't think he could have done any more on any of them, could he? Um, I d no, maybe not, but, you know, he's... I can't imagine it was all sweetness and light no, oh, in the Dottori household no, no, last no, absolutely night. absolutely no. I, I take your point. He's got some nice rides today. Um, yeah, Gregory unbeaten, worthy favourite like him. Um, but I am going for Peking Opera in this. Again, Aidan O'Brien's got four runners today, which doesn't seem to be as many as he sort of yeah, normally two would and have. Two in one race. Yeah. And He's only represented in three races. And maybe just a smaller select team, all of them doing very well. Peking Opera comes here off the back of the win. Ryan Moore in flying form. Got that listed win last month um, and coming to form at the right time. Excellent. Kate? I am being unoriginal here. Gregory, for me, I just, I, I really like him. And another one for Wethanan Racing after they purchased mm. Isaac Shelby earlier on, well, yesterday. And uh, yeah, they seem to be splashing the cash. A uh, Qatari-based operation, I believe, but quite new to it and obviously want winners. So wish them all the luck and hopefully they'll get that with Gregory here as well. That wonderful pedigree that we know with out of the damn Gretchen who herself a really smart horse and she's she's produced all of those foals with all the the funny just first normal names isn't it um and another one here then Gregory uh son of Golden Horn so the pedigree suggests that the step up and trip should really suit him he's done nothing wrong in his two starts so far won impressively on debut and then he was even more talented I thought showed at Goodwood on his second start over a mile three enlisted company so yes this is another step up then for him but we've got a load of horses in here where I'm just not sure that they are quite group two quality but he looks to be anyway to be progressing that way so yeah Gregory to justify whatever he must have cost to weapon and racing absolutely and currently a 13 to 8 favorite Gregory I thought circle of fire was was reasonably solid I thought he finished in the first three what do you like here G-Rod yeah it's, it's an interesting race this one I was at Goodwood when uh, Gregory won last time he's a big baby He's a big baby. I mean, <laughs> mentally, physically, everything about Emotionally. Him. Yeah, I mean, he, he just does everything slowly. Uh, he looked like he was in all sorts of trouble and was well on top at the finish, you know, going away. So he's got loads of raw ability. Question for me is, is, is he there yet for a race like this? And is he? At Royal Ascot and his 13 to 8 favourite. Is he there? Um, not for me at the price. I think he'll get there. Well, as um, Kate's already said, you know, Duncan and Samuel and Gretchen and all the weird and one-named horses that <laughs> yeah. are all quite good. And you get very rarely nowadays, you get horses really bred for stamina mm. um, because the, most horses nowadays are bred for speed. So, so the stamina's really going out of the breed, but this horse is bred for stamina, Gregory, by Golden Horn and Gretchen State. Um, however, not at the price for me. He's just too much of a baby. <laughs> I think he really is a baby, isn't he? You think? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like Roy Keane now, isn't he? Big yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> baby. So Saint George is the one that, that I like. Um, he's a he, he's a big grails. Um, tr travelled beautifully through. I think it was a handicap last time out of Donny. Um, uh, really looked like he was going to go away and win well. I was in second, sort of stuck to him for a little while, and then he, he was pulling away again at the finish. That was a mile and six. It's a mile and six. Stiff track like this will suit St. George. And just at the prices, I, I really do respect Gregory. I really like him. It'd be a really good horse in time. But he's just, he's a, just big a big baby. baby. <laughs> That's Gregory. He's a big baby. Those are our selections for the Queen's Vaz. It's going to be an interesting race. I, I'm just with Circle of Fire each way. It's St. George for Rodders. It is Gregory for Kate. And it is Peking Opera for Ali Vance. 
The finale, race seven on day two of Royal Ascot. It is the Windsor Castle Stakes. I think one of the best bets of the day runs here. Barnwell Boy is your seven to two favourite. Johannes Brahms is nine to two. Maximum Impact thirteen to two, and it is eight to one bar. So very quickly, G Rod, send our viewers home with a winner, please. Yeah, on the same day that, that Gregory won at Goodwood, Barnwell Boy won the first race, and he was mightily impressive. I was blown away. Yeah, I think he'll win this. I do too. But don't think it's a very don't think it's a very strong race. The UDJ looks looks a weak race to me. Barnwell Boy, really quick time, mm. pulled really well clear at the line. Very professional as well. Not like Gregory, he's not a baby. You know, he was really right on it, straight out the gates. He was bang there, right up with them early. He left no problem going the early pace. Strong at the finish. Yeah, really like him. I really like him as well. Good. So two votes for Barnwell Boy in the Windsor Castle Stakes. I actually don't think 7-2 is the worst value favourite I've seen all week. I think this is a really good horse. Oshie Murphy takes the ride. He's got a good book of rides today. Kate, what do you like here? Oh, I, the one whose price I couldn't really understand. World of Darcy. Another mm. one for Paul Burke. Where if you like Elite Status, you must like World of Darcy then. And people are saying that Elite Status is the next best thing. So, um, so yeah, for him to finish second, a well-beaten second him, admittedly, last time out to surely put him at least in some sort of line. And if this isn't that a very strong uh, Windsor Castle, then 14 to one looks a pretty fair price for another Carl Burke, Danny Tudhope ridden two-year-old here. Impressive on his debut. I know it was only Pontefract there, but he was eased in the finish and then listed form to his name now as well. And extra bit of stamina should really help him out in this. Beautiful, so it's World of Darcy for Kay Tracy. And wrap it up there, Ali, for us. I've got a big each way shot on this one. Um, action point, horse number one for Archie Was uh, Watson and Holly Doyle. Um, good yard with two year olds. And Maximum Impact, who is right, one of the fancied ones at 13 to 2, finished two lengths behind that, whereas you'll find Action Point. That was over course, so likes Ascot. Got some a bit of form there for a very powerful yard, obviously in good form as well after yesterday. Um, Holly Doyle rides, and I think he's a, a, a overpriced in this and hopefully we'll sneak a place okay so we've got a variety of selections there for your windsor castle myself and gerard though we are oh so sweet on barn well boy that is your seven races previewed all that's left to do now is reveal our charity best best bet on day two of royal ascot we had a good day yesterday thanks to johnny who tipped river tiber and i think we had two charity bets up so i actually said to johnny i said what was his charity you know and he straight away he, he he gave me four letters like 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 I don't know what the four letters were. It was like I R S P or something. So I was like, oh, very good, Johnny. Not thinking of. And he wanted me to ask him who who who's that charity, Johnny? But I was like, maybe it's a famous charity, and I don't know who it is. And he rang me last night, and he goes, I think I got that charity bet up. And I was like, you did, yeah. It's it's River Tiber. And he said, you never asked me what the charity was. And I says, what was it? And it was like. Blah, 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 for, for troubled punters or something. So it was a skit. <laughs> so he goes, actually, will you give it to the St. Vincent de Paul? So it's for the St. Vincent de Paul at uh, River Tiber. But uh, I was ashamed to ask for what the four letters might have been. OK, so let's get a few charity bets up. Uh, Ali, your best bet for day two of Royal Ascot I'm is? I'm hoping Luxembourg in the big one today. And my charity is the Mark Davis Injured Riders Fund. Kate. I was trying to think up some sort of quick acronym. So. Don't do uh, it. No, I'm Don't not do going to do it. Me. No, um, I'll go Racing Welfare and My Prospero. Excellent. So you're going against one another. So hopefully one of you might get it up. Yeah. Uh, G Rod? Yeah, Adelaide's for me. I think it's the 305, isn't it, Ascot? Would and you not uh, do the double? Would you not do no, the related come double? On, come on. Come on. Let's do the double. Should we do it? Let's should, do should it. We do the related double. Let's do the related double. Adelaide's and Dunham. And Dunham in the five o'clock. Yeah. 50 quid double, 50 Adelaide's quid double and Dunham. And Who is your charity? Injured Jockey's Fund. Injured Jockey's yeah. Fund. You're probably going to get nothing in your jockey's fund, but you might get an absolute fortune. <laughs> G-Rod's related double. It is Adelaide's and Dunham. And I'm going to go early. I'm going to go with Relief Rally in the opener because I think Relief Rally, the value is most certainly gone with Relief Rally, but I think he, I think she is seriously quick and I think that form at Salisbury is really good. So those, ladies and gentlemen, are your charity bets for day two of Royal Ascot. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Looking forward to it, Gerard. Yeah, can't wait. Really looking forward to it. Day three, isn't it? In it? No, it's day two. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't do it to me. And Kate and Ali, you're going to get the glad rags on now. Yep, ready to run. Yep. Looking forward to it, Kate? Ready to cover it from my living room. Yeah. Oh, you're not going today? Nope, not today. Okay. Back on Friday. 
So there you go, those are our selections, as you can see on our screen. The day two naps at Royal Ascot, it's Adelaide's for G-Rod, Relief Rally for myself, it's Luxembourg for Ali Vance, and my Prospero for Kate Tracy. We had a winner on Finders Keepers earlier on today, very well done to Stuart in Hull. Tune in tomorrow when once again Paddy Power will be giving away 100,000 quid in Finders Keepers. you got to stay tuned, we'll be back tomorrow morning to preview day three of Royal Ascot. It's Gold Cup Day, my thanks to Ali Vance, to Kay Tracy, G-Rod, it's been a pleasure as always. I've been David Jennings and thank you very much for watching. Good morning, Royal Ascot.